and there we go again. It's time for game number two here in the joint Dota League season two. It's a two game series that means the potential outcome is of course two zero or one one, which means Invasion has now a way or opportunity to strike back, make this a one one and secure a point at least here against Skype Scythe very convincingly took game number one. I mean you guys saw it there was no hiccup in the craft whatsoever. It was a steady progression into a very, very, very convincing uh, gold as well as XP lead. And I think at, at the end they were even, I don't know, they were holding back. They had the game in their hands all the time. I think they could have pushed high crown a bit earlier, but they wanted to wait and make 100% sure that Eraser, for example, can dive towers. Tier 4 towers plus a tier 3 hitting him. Cheese on him. He was still munching for two heroes before he went down. It took pretty much... He was like a raid boss in World of Warcraft. It required probably uh, like a 25 or 40 man raid to bring him down. In the meantime, his his team, they did shared work. They went for the racks. Razor went for the giggles. It was actually quite fun. And I was surprised how well Invasion though defended their base because the first time uh, Scythe tried to go high ground they got a bit, big slap in their face and they actually thought oh well Invasion defending very well the high ground so maybe we have an opportunity here to see Invasion holding themselves a bit longer in the game but then like 30 minutes, 35 minutes plus then the items they were just rolling they were coming in like the the courier was working overtime just bringing new and more and better items like for all those yes it was uh i was absolutely surprised by the belt of strength and yasha coming out i actually thought he's going for a manta just uh, to bring you know to razor illusions in there for more uh, building push since he went anyway for the arganum's refresher build but um yeah it was supposed to be sanga yasha and i was like uh sanga yasha I don't understand, but okay, it doesn't really matter in the end. He just wanted to go for, of course, a bit more right click. But yeah, I mean, very strong Tide Hunter, and now we see it in the bans. Like, the reactions are already coming. Invasion, they don't like the Naga against them, and I can absolutely understand. Scythe, they also utilize the, uh, the Naga quite a lot. Like, I casted Miracle Nagas, I think two or three times and this guy is always getting some nice farm through on this hero so in banning the Miracle Naga is definitely a nice option. The Tide Hunter doing very very well in his lane like the Prisoner back against him didn't work out I mean they were quite equal in farm but then the Prisoner back rotated off the lane and the Tide Hunter just got more and more farm. The funny thing is in the end he had even a refresher orb but he was fighting all the time, never dying, so he didn't even have the mana to utilize his refresher, which was kind of funny. But it's it's always good to have, sure, <laughs> why not? On the other side, we have a Batch Rider. Um, so Scythe also reacting on the picks from the first game. The Batch Rider did actually quite a good job. The only problem was, like, he found some nice initiations. Some led to a kill as well. The problem is he, he had a fast Plink Dagger, but from there on his, his item progression was pretty stagnant. Like, he didn't get more items, like... That was the biggest problem. So even if he initiated, he mostly died while having target still in a lasso. And I don't know. So Saif, the second ban is a brewmaster, also understandable. And yes, I don't want to see this hero anymore. I just can't see him anymore. Saif, the first pick was a Doom. Very interesting. I like Doom. I like uh, Aura stacking Doom as well. I don't like the mech carrier Doom because I think that hero really should carry uh, a lot of auras, not just by the Devour, also going into it, like AC Carrier, Shiva Carrier, maybe even a Flats Carrier, then going into right click, getting the Alpha Wolf uh, aura at like 20, 25, 30 minutes plus when you go for the heavy team fights. It's amazing what you can get for your team. Like, actually we see quite some teams now going for this aura stacking, making sure you have uh, Mech, Flats, Pipe, then a Doom in there who brings the Alpha Wolf, a Necro Book, at least one for um, the movement speed and attack speed buff. And of course then the Shivas and the AC is even more to come. Sometimes we see even a Sand King there, so a Whale of Discord for a negative uh, aura. And it's not quite an aura, of course, but I mean the area of effect is so huge that you pretty much can call it an aura. You can almost catch like five heroes in there. If you have that all, then your team fight is of course very, very powerful. So let's see if we see something similar. Invasion, they decide to go for Rubik first pick, which is interesting. I mean, Rubik is usually a nice answer to uh, whatever there is already. And I mean, with a Doom up, a Rubik is not too bad. I mean, a Rubik is happy about a lot of spells coming by the Doom. 
now with the invoker as the second one also there he he can get some nice steals off the viper well we saw it in in the first game but to be honest the viper the item progression was not good and he was driven out of the lane so so fast i mean the only reason they didn't have the first plot and the second plot as well on the viper was because the desert was really fast with his shallow grave reaction and yeah but after that i don't know he had the mech relatively soon but the Arganem Scepter took him quite a while. I think they were already on high ground when the Arganem Scepter came out, and at this point it was just a bit too late. But let's see. This Rubik stealing, for example, a Doom that would be nice, so he needs to be fast on his stealing trigger. Invasion. They go and ban the Racer, so another ban based pretty much on the uh, on the first game. And now the Prisa back as well, like banned out by, by Scythe. The Prisa back did actually quite some work. In the end fight, you saw it. Like, he survived very long when he turned his back to the entire fight. They tried to g get him down all the time, but yeah, the amount of quill sprays was was quite dangerous to Scythe, even with their advantage in items, especially the HP pool, of course, being a lot higher. But yeah, quill sprays that stack up is always a dangerous thing, regardless. So, so far, it, it definitely looks interesting. And two more buns are to come. Uh, let's see what it's going to be. And Invisible Blue joined the chat. Hello and welcome. This is game number two in a two-game series. Scythe versus Invasion in the joint Dota League. <laughs> I mean, there is a two minutes delay, so in two minutes he's gonna hear it. Maybe someone in the chat actually is gonna answer him faster than I can. But yep, we have the two last bands coming out. Well, last bands for the second duration. I mean, of course, um, we have. The Rasta, okay, so some pushing potential is going to be taken out, and Scythe is saying, okay, we don't want to have a Chen jungler, plus of course a Chen with uh, ultimate that is able to heal invasion here is up. So, yeah, Chen also would be the potential mech carrier. To be honest, I don't see too many Chens in the, in the last games anymore, like... I don't know, since the jungle nerf, we already had a decline in jungling heroes, like in the, in the last couple of games we had... Uh, some Enigma picks because Enigma still being a very nice farmer. Then again, nowadays there's so many ways of interrupting even things through BKBs. It's it's quite interesting that like all those big ultimate heroes they are barely getting utilized, and if they get utilized, they mostly are getting stacked. Yesterday we had a game, for example, with Darkseer, Conker, Magnus, and I think Enigma, or was it Enigma, or was it a Titan? I'm not sure, but there was a, a huge stacking of big fat ultimates and talking about big fat ultimates there we have the ancient apparition so ice blast is coming out ice blast always being a nasty nasty spell especially against the doom of course because he can't heal up with his scorched earth which is part of his tankiness of course uh, the invoker is pretty much the same when he runs away um, and just shifting into more region coming back maybe even into the fight after he reaches up so ancient apparition uh, it's of course he needs fast level first of all to get the first ice blast then the first ice blast is really just a, a bit utility ultimate and nice in the fights but the duration is really really short and the impact damage is is not that big the burn damage is pretty much non-existent so mostly the first one doesn't lead to too many kills but then from level 2 ice blast it gets really nasty especially if the ancient apparition has some farm got some nice kills before so a faster gun and scepter on an ancient apparition is always the horror for each and every team a big fat ice blast on a team fight with a Ghanem Scepter, this is always a bad omen for the team fight, and they're gonna couple this up even with a Centaur Warner. So there we have the first hero that requires pretty much a blink initiation. But wow, Scythe, they get a Shadow Demon Mirana combo through in the third and fourth pick. That's definitely interesting. So they forced Invasion into banning out heroes that they know that are being played by Miracle or being played already in the last game. So it's very very interesting. So Disruption, Soul Catcher into possibly an arrow and a sunstrike if that invoker is gonna be exhort this is looking looking really 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 weird i don't know invasion you have to fear there's a lot of roaming ganking potential coming out of scythe here and that is probably their source of getting another goal and xp advantage even early in the game let's see how it works out i mean there are now of course some tanky heroes on invasion side um that the center warner of course if he gets an in initiation on shadow demon invoker that might be very nice i already talked about the ice blast as well as the rubik i mean rubik stealing for example disruption stealing demonic purge stealing the arrow of the mirana like the rubik definitely has a nice abundance of spells he can steal here 
So let's see how this works out. And now, that's a very interesting ban. Jagger is getting banned out by Scythe. I didn't expect a Jagger coming, to be honest. No, I not. I did not. Absolutely not. The Jagger in this setup, nah. No. Nope. Wouldn't work out, I think. Especially because you could get doomed even, no, no, against the doom. I don't think that would have ever worked out, but sure, they decide for it, and the problem is, I mean, Invasion, they can pick now from pretty much all of the carries, except for Naga and Razor, and, okay, Rave King it is, but this time the Rave King being in a carry role, so that's now getting definitely interesting, so Center Warner offline, Rave King in a tri lane, of course, with Ancient Apparition, which is pretty nice because they have Telekinesis as well as uh, Cold Feed and the Rave Fire Plus, so they definitely get a proc on the Cold Feed, locking that target even for longer down. If they if they even do it correctly, they get Rave Fire Plus plus Cold Feed, which is already a proc, and then followed up by, of course, Telekinesis and Fate Bolt. This is a very long lockdown on one target, so let's see how this works out. It's definitely a nice try lane, but then again, as I said already, Mirana Shadow Demon combination against you, that's not too great. I mean, the Doom might be a potential offlaner. I've seen it already many times. Invoker gonna be in the mid. Try lane Mirana with the Shadow Demon, and let's see what else is coming there. Another support um, may be coming. Ah, come on, guys, decide. You got 30 seconds left. 30 seconds to make this decision. Go, go. And 20 seconds left. They're not, they're holding back on it. They're actually thinking about it. Do they want to go greedy, like really, really greedy, or do they just want to go for a standard build so the Mirana and Volker Doom being enough as carries? I don't know. Like, 3 seconds, 2 seconds. Wow, that's why they thought so long about it. It's a Tinker, but now with a Tinker, the laning is going to be interesting. Is this going to be an offline Tinker getting some experience here and there? I mean, they are on the on the Radiant side, so the Tinker can't really go for uh, Ancients farming there unless he does it actually from the Secret Shop on. I saw that already happening once or twice, but I don't think so. Like, this is going to be now... Is this going to be a Doom being in a tri lane? I mean, it could work out. Oh, Invoker, safe lane. Miracle is, is playing the Invoker, so... Yeah, this is gonna be support Shadow Demon Mirana. Polosone playing the offlane on the Doom. In the mid, we're gonna have the Tinker. And, yeah, this is very, very interesting. Very interesting. So, going for a fast introduction of the teams. I still... I forgot, actually, to ask about, like, who are the standards and everything. So, we have to go with what we have here. We have ADTR here on the Rubik, followed by Snow and Ghost on the center and the Rave King. Like, EZG is playing the uh, uh, the Viper and Afsat playing on the Ancient Apparition. On the other side, we have the Standing Kai, the Mysterious Kai, who uh, nobody knows where he's from, uh, playing the Shadow Demon, followed by Father on Tinker. And the mid, we're gonna have Miracle on his Invoker. And, yeah, Standing Infinite here on the uh, Mirana and Polozone, he's gonna be the offlane doom, like, it's gonna be very interesting how they're gonna do it, oh, but they actually, they spotted out the Tinker already, Tinker heading back into it, but Kai might be in trouble, oh yeah, there it is, there is the hoof stump already, and now, oh, they used the chilling touch, and they didn't even need to, like, that would have been just fine by normal clicks, but, wow, but now, the Tinker, he has to care as well, I mean, if there's a ray fire blast, like, he could easily die, especially with the poison attack already coming out as a slow. Like, now, that's the funny part. Now we see, actually, the nerf of the Hoof Stomp, like, in Mana Cost, actually has a huge effect. Because if you go for an early fight like this, with the Mana Pool you get, then you need a Clarity to get a second Hoof Stomp off. Because now, 130 on each and every level, since 6.81, that's definitely interesting. But what is Polozon doing here? Oh, he's getting... Ah, he's getting the... That was that's definitely interesting. Sure, he with the invisibility rune would not be that potent, but yeah, infinite here on the Mirana, landing an arrow, an easy arrow out of a 
invisibility rune, that might be definitely something. In the mid they need a cold stop actually to get a kill on the Viper, but sure, why not? It, it is possible. I think the Rave King would be a better target because with level 1 Scorched Earth, I mean, he went for Devour, okay, so not that optimal, but they could get an easy kill on the Rave King, but instead I think we're going to see it go on the Tinker, which is, of course, also very nice. We have a Telekinesis coming up, but... Is there actually a protective ward or something? No, there's nothing. There's just one ward coming out here. And now it's time. Is it the Wraith King? I mean, his invisibility rune is out. There's a lot of creeps there, so the arrow might not land properly. But let's see what it is. I mean, there is theoretically a disruption for easier arrow. He's trying it. I know, I feel it. Like, I don't kill. I just don't want to miss that kill. There's already some uh, cold snap harass coming out in the mid and now yeah he's coming back with just the poison attack so the second point here corrosive skin i definitely like it and kai oh well now he showed up and there's some blinks so the rave king knows he is no he doesn't want to be in that position he's expected but in the mid we already have a go on miracle and it's absolutely enough the telekinesis being used the poison attack level two against the invoker they can't really do anything but the reaction comes instantaneously i mean kai and infinite here just coming and is there an arrow or oh, there's so two supports from the side they just smoked up but now they're seen if the viper comes in that might be very very bad he has no leap whatsoever like kai he has to run so this is not the third kill going invasion's way it's looking really really good here at the start of the game so Scythe, you have to really take care. There is even something else, but he has no. Oh, he has no telekinesis. He could have lifted him up uphill here, and so he had to use a TP, which he doesn't have. Plus, they don't even have a flying courier yet. So Doom, Doom is gonna be a very interesting target for them to kill. Of course, Ray Fire Plus not coming out yet, but now it's coming as well as the Ice Vortex, and he has scorched Earth. So telekinesis following up right now with the Fate Bolt. The Fate Bolt. Oh, not enough mana for the Fate Bolt. They but they have enough right clicks. There's actually an, a long ranged arrow coming here by infinite but it's not enough so in the end he's alive getting a nice kill. In the meantime we have Miracle going aggressive on the Viper but it's just harassed damage and he's getting also quite some damage of course just by the corrosive skin. So so far it's definitely looking interesting. Invasion striking back after this game one which was very convincingly won by Scythe and this time 0 4 3 minutes that's more than a kill per minute and I absolutely like it. Sorry, I had to take a sip of my tea. Otherwise, my voice will crash over the day. I still have um, I have two best of three incoming for me today. And today in the night, I have uh, even South American Dota to cast, which is uh, gonna be two more two-game series. So you guys see, if my if my voice is crashing on the first game of the day, then I have a huge problem. But either way, we have to Doom trying to sneak here some XP, and he's getting punished with. Oh my god, Ray Fire plus Telekinesis, this is enough. The Chilling Touch, such a potent spell here, so much damage coming in. And the biggest problem about Doom is, of course, he's level 3. That means, um, saying he has pretty much no armor whatsoever. I mean, now he has armor, of course, with Tranker Boots and everything. But the problem is, I mean, Doom starts with zero armor as a hero. He has pretty much the same armor as a Wisp, which is nothing. And yeah, therefore, like chilling touch plus right clicks and everything, it's it's really bringing him down. So so far, it's not working out for Scythe at all. Zero five, and I mean on paper they are a very good team, maybe even a tiny bit better than Invasion. And there's an arrow. Oh, this arrow! Oh, it's so close on the Viper, and there is a Soul Catcher after the Cold Snap. This time, I mean Mirana has this time the leap but oh my god tornado coming out in the mid and polosan joining the fight as well but he has nothing he can't do anything he has the speed aura i mean there's a soul catch up oh and this time ancient apparition is getting hit they get the viper as well as the ancient apparition this is a super long arrow very beautifully done actually by the mirana the mirana who is stacking now at the 53 second mark so yep finally scythe is striking back it i mean it took four heroes pretty much and a nice arrow but in the end, kill is kill. It doesn't matter how much you invest into it. The Tinker so far, he's level 5. Um, he's going for... Yeah, I I always like the combat build Tinker. I'm playing it myself, but... 
This Tinker is definitely not a combat build. He's going for the March of the Machine, so he can farm somewhere else. All he needs is like the nice stacks. So let's see if those stacks are actually for Tinker. If those two are stacks, you can go for it with a Tinker here, March of the Machine in this direction, and you farm both camps. Uh, very nice is the same here. The best position for a Tinker is here, of course, because you can farm all. Uh, all three chems when you do the March of the Machines in this direction. So March of the Machine build in a game where you already have like five kills against you is probably a nice decision. But he has to take care though, because when the Centaur is level six, he has to stampede to catch up onto him, and that means Hoofstomp will hit, level three Double Edge will hit as well. And if there's just anything to follow up, like for example the Rubik, he was already standing at the tower hiding there. It's gonna be really dangerous. And now we have the Tinker. I think he's heading towards the rune. But oh, F set is there. Actually, they could get him. Like there's a disruption, but a Tinker is not coming. March of the machines would be of course nice. And there is the stampede. Do they want to catch up on Kai here or on what is that? I have no idea. There is an arrow flying. Oh my god! Again, so close. The Mirana being nice on target actually with the arrows. I have to say that. But sometimes it's just like an inch missing. Yeah, a few are saying, yes, that's a lot of Dota, yeah. <laughs> but for you, it's good, because you can pretty much, like, you can join Half-Life TV and you get entertained from early morning to late night. It doesn't matter what time zone you're in, because we are casting all over the place, which means if you're in America, Asia, or Europe, it will be something. But now we have an EMP here directly on the Rave King, and he has, does he have, yeah, he has enough mana for his ultimate. I don't know if they want to follow up. The problem is the Doom not being level 6. With the Doom on him, that would have been interesting, but very nice use of this stick. I think this was saving his butt there, because it's the first ultimate, very long cooldown, and he was below the mana threshold of 140 after the EMP, but with the stick, of course, he has easy restorage of his mana, and therefore the ultimate was active, so... Yep, good that he had this stick. Stick, best item in-game. I'm always saying that, and it's true. And let's see, here, bottom, like, I can feel it. In 10 seconds, they have the means to kill something, but... Then again, Kai is around here. Now, there is a sentry ward, and they see the Rubik, and there, now we go for it. I think they want to go for the Tinker, but March of the Machines, this is something you don't want to stand in there. Look at the damage. Like, Rubik just took, like, a couple hits of that March of the Machines and already dropped, like, a third of his HP. If he would run through the March of the Machines, he would pretty much die. So, yeah, March of the Machines is definitely something you don't want to fight into it. So, if you get it up before then you sometimes lure greedy enemies also into deaths, which I definitely like. In pups it definitely works. I'm a, I'm a huge tinker player. <laughs> I'm playing myself pretty much whenever I get to play, which is not very often, but... Now we have a haste rune on the Doom. Unfortunately, the Doom not being level 6, that's a huge thing. The Mirana or the Invoker, who is it? Yeah, it is Miracle who gets this haste rune, and do they go top with it? If he does one devour, he is level 6, yes, and he is right now level six so that means no ultimate on snow that is very interesting so miracle cold snap emp there's the doom but he has not not enough mana for the doom oh my god there is a emp and the cold snap is coming out oh the arrow the arrow just in front of his face just sushing by now he has actually a doom for snow if they want to go for more like if he wraps around come on get go this direction wrap around doom him up there are some flings coming give him the doom give him the doom all oh, the tornado holding him in place the doom will come up and snow will get the damage some right clicks more yep there's no deny whatsoever coming and a rubik alone can't do anything but doom actually might die here the telekinesis come up the hoof stomp and the double edge so two kills for the cost of a doom i guess that's okay but at the same time tinker died um ba -ba -ba -ba. the center actually got the tinker kill yeah so in the end it was a 2-2 trade, if you think about it, if you count the both lanes together. And I still need a split camera, like, seriously, if Hafla TV at some point will start to make money or something, and we get some sort of uh, support going, then I will get a second dude here, more soft and hardware in the studio, and we go for split cam. Whenever there's fights on, this, on, on different lanes, we go for a split screen, so... <laughs> Or an instant replay, that would also be amazing. But either way, for now, it's all low budget production value but I still hope you enjoy it. <laughs> so let's see. It was a 2-2 trade but in the end we are 10 minutes. I'm swapping to net worth. We have 4-7 standing at the moment. So I'm still a bit, bit on the back foot but if... Oh the arrow again. Just a centimeter missing. 
But we have more rotations here, and there is the Blink Dagger, the Hoof Stomp on Miracle, and now the Viper Strike will come. Do they even need it? The, oh, the Ice Blast is gonna hit, but a Defensive Disruption buying a lot of time, and they have no vision whatsoever, so in the end, I mean, Viper is getting the kill. Oh my god, poor range creep. He just got stunned and gets denied in the end. So Miracle not going down, that was very important, but the Tinker coming, the Marching Machine will do some damage for sure. Actually, the Viper has to care about his HP, but in the end it's not enough. So the Tinker as a follow-up kill, Invasion at the moment on fire, and if that fire is actually real or if it's just a small light, look at it. Yes, it is real. They have a 3k XP advantage and they have a 2k gold advantage. It's not much for, uh, I mean, a 10 minute mark and a 5 kill lead. So Scythe is still well in range to make up for this, especially now that we have an item like uh, a Hand of Money here coming in. Hand of Midas, aka Hand of Money. And yeah, a Doom will be always scary because Devour is ticking on level 4. He gets the max bonus gold. He has the Midas now ticking every. Uh, one and a half minutes, so let's see how his farm is going. There is the BOT stun on Father, that makes him, of course, also very, very mobile. I like actually his approach, he went without anything. There is no bottle, no soaring whatsoever. He really just went for instant BOT rush, so he's as mobile as he can be at 10 minutes. And without bottle, without soaring, getting um, your BOTs at 10 minutes, it's not bad, even for the, especially for the fact that you died already twice. So someone who died twice and still doing that well, in my opinion, it's all good. So, but what is the next step now for Scythe? I think for now they are fine with farming. The ultimate is ready again on Wraith King, so going for him would not be the best choice, of course, because you might get the counter kill on a rotation. Doom at the moment in the jungle. This time he has, yeah, finally has the Swiftness Aura, plus of course the Centaur stun. The next rune will be 12 minute rune and it's gonna be, it's gonna be bottom, it's gonna be illusion. Nobody's picking it up for now. Maybe actually the doom. I'm also wondering if the doom is going for any sort of initiation. I mean, like before 6.81 we saw a lot of dooms playing the shadow blade. Now after 6.81 we saw a lot of heroes going, pretty much almost every hero goes for a goddamn blink dagger. Like we, we see... Uh, we see so many heroes, except for those who have uh, already a blink, but in the mid, oh, there's an Ice Blast hitting on Miracle, as well as the Hoofstorm. You are so down. Like, even if you would have swapped into the um, Ghost Walk, you can't remove it, the Ice Pass debuff, you would have shattered. In the end, they push the top tower here. There is an arrow flying from the side, not hitting anything. Instead, they go on the Doom, but Scorch Earth is there, and the Doom goes on the AA, so there will be a lot of damage, there will be, oh, the Doom was stolen, but they buy some time, of course, the Doom will still go down here in the end, maybe a deny, no, Fateful will finish it, and the Stampede will buy them now the time they need to get out of here, do they even want to finish up, no, they don't want to, so in the end, that was not a good fight for Scythe, not really, like, especially with the Doom stolen, that was not very optimal, but Miracle is coming in, there is an EMP, but from the side, Miracle getting so much damage already, where is it, Fateful, anything, oh, Ghost Walk will help him, and now they are really low, Miracle coming back in the fight, and I was talking already about the Fateful, it was not coming, but him being super greedy, that wasn't really good, and even if they would walk back, that would have been, like, yeah, a Viper coming, with a Viper Strike, so 513, safe, I think now it's getting a bit out of control for you, like all those fights, like under normal circumstances with normal or like similar farm and similar gold items and everything on the heroes, I think that fight would have been in Scythe's favor, but like given the advantage Invasion has now, it's, it's not really working. There's a courier flying, which gave away the position of the Viper. They saw, yep, those wards saw the courier, which means they know the Viper must have been somewhere here in this direction, and that's why the Doom was already there. Do they find her? No. That would have been, of course, nice, finding the Viper here alone, a disruption just to interrupt the TP, and then going just alone for her. Viper is wielding, like, yielding a lot of uh, XP, of course. There's a, 10, a level 10 Viper you would kill. And all the other heroes, I mean we have level 6 Mirana, actually we could look at all the, the hero level. I'm displaying it right now, left top of the screen, there you see it, and the three really super super high in XP heroes. Level 10 on the Sand, on the Viper, and level 11 even on Snow. And now they want to dive that poor Tinker, but he, uh, he TP'd out, you saw it already, he tried to get the Hoofstomp off there, but nicely interrupted. So in the end, 
They still go for the tier 1 tower, Viper getting some hits in, but a one on one versus this. But the Tinker coming back into it. Yes, no blink dagger, that was too greedy. Look at him melting down. I mean, he knew that the center is there. Going for it, I don't think that was a good choice. So, in the end, he's going down, and I think this is gonna be a tower trade. But then again, in, in the mid, Miracle is pushing as well as them top. So, top tower, I don't think there's a rotation coming in the mid. Okay, Snow is there, and now he's losing all the mana, he also has not his ultimate ready, so he has to be careful. Miracle could kill him with the next invoke. Oh, I guess he could. I mean, the tower trade is successful, both of the teams get at least one tier 1. Viper is getting the last hit, and Doom is getting the last hit, so the last hits were even on those targets who needed the most. I mean, farm-wise, but in the mid, like the Wrath King, you really have to go back, my friend. Like, without your ultimate, without mana, like, you don't want to be there against Miracle. I'm actually a bit disappointed about what we saw so far from the disruption and arrow combination. I think we didn't see a single one yet. All those arrows they were trying to fish like on their own and oh my god the is coming out. This is one is for Invoker and they get, do they have vision? Yes the dust is coming out directly after the EMP will hit pretty much all of them. Now defensive disruption buying some time. The Dinker is there with March of the Machines, that's a lot of damage and the Rubik is getting even doomed up so who is going down that's the question a lot of damage march of the machines Rubik is getting denied by the Viper really nice reaction there snow still has to be careful no ultimate maybe they come back from the side I don't know at the moment this creep here is the scout for Scythe so they can go back but it will be seen in, oh, in the meantime doom that's a bad one he already got stunned by the center warner so in the end it doesn't really matter like even with that arrow on the center they still lose to doom so make this a 1-1 trade but it is a support for a core pretty much it's not worth it it's not really worth it by the way father now he finished the bottle and the soaring after the bot's so he has the time now to transition into anything and we have different approaches to the tinker and yes tinker for me i talk a lot about it because i love the hero like I wonder what he's going for. I mean, uh, the first thing you need now on a Tinker before you go into level 2 rearm is you need a mana pool. Because right now, it's only the Soul Ring that keeps you alive. If you have level 2 rearm, then it's not really working out. He has some nicely stacked Ancients here. Like, this is definitely gonna work out. Like, he's gonna get them. He can even go for one more rearm uh, because he has a bottle charge by Soul Ring. So, this will be approximately, I don't know, at least 2k gold he's getting from this. But the question is, does he go into a Dagon build and later maybe even an Ethereal plate? We also saw Tinkers uh, trying for the Arcanum Scepter build, where the Heat Seeking Missile, of course, is, um, say it, is buffed. The amount you do there is buffed, which is nice if you try to hold a team back, especially if a team has an advantage and you're standing high ground, you just spam those rockets as well as March of Machines. It's really hard to break uh, into like high ground or even towers, but. The Dagon build is of course also very nice because he has potential targets he can nuke down really really fast with a high level Dagon. That would be, for example, the Rubik, that would be the Ancient Apparition, the Wraith King, well, uh, at the moment he has nothing against magic as such. The Viper of course not being a good target because of corrosive skin, but sometimes it's still enough to just burst him down. And well, I think, yeah, the Santa Warren are already having a casual cloak, now even upgrading it to Hood of Defiance. So, Magic damage wise, also the center not the best target, so I don't know if a Dagon build for example would be interesting. But now, oh, we missed the kill here on uh, the Rubik. He actually stole the Ghost Walk before, but now do they go on Snow? Does he have enough mana? He has enough mana for the ultimate, so he will go down the first time. Are there any rotations? I don't think so. Oh, the Doom as well as the Arrow. The rest is just about right clicks. I don't even think they needed the Doom. The Doom was kind of wasted. Then again, well, it's a relatively low cooldown, just one and a half minutes. But in the meantime, while well, they get those two kills, oh my god, oh, what a nice blink out by the Tinker. That was really last second reaction there. If that Hoofstomp would have gotten through, then an easy kill with Weapon Strike and a Poison Attack. Now, they of course get the Rocket Spam here, but you, you see the Rockets are doing very limited damage on those two targets. I mean, the center, like he didn't even take a scratch there. Foot of Defiance. Well, AA and uh, Viper, well, they do much better. <laughs> no one in chat. Yes, there are many people in chat, but not all of them are really talkative. So, if you want that the chat actually talks with each other, then start writing in the chat and enjoy it. Like, if as soon as I see uh, like a nice comment or anything like that, I also try to respond to viewers 
um, it's a lot easier when there's just a couple hundred people in the chat than like 2,000, 3,000. And since this game, for some reason, does not attract more viewers, usually on Scythe games, we have a lot more viewers. I mean, this game is definitely, it's pretty much everywhere. It's in, on several batting sites, it's on JD, it's on Gozo Gamers, it's on Manaski, it's, it should be, I think, everywhere, but, well... No, just like 200, almost 300 people interested in this game. I guess the stomp of uh, Scythe in game 1 was uh, not very encouraging to keep on viewing. Everybody thought like, yeah, Scythe got this, but this time Invasion is striking back. You see it in the net worth, we have two people like leading here, but then right after actually, like the Doom is catching up because Devourer and Midas, the, the Tinker is getting more and more better. Oh my god, this is really, really, really bad. No, the Rubik, they don't go for it. Where was the disruption? I actually thought he's going for it, so in the meantime, they get the Roshan, and now they're in an awkward position, so 100 gold down the train for a smoke that didn't give a kill here on the Rubik. I think they could have gone for it, and that would have been such a good kill, because he just picked up that gem. Losing that gem there, now all the de-warding is coming, like, this is really, really bad, but we have the EMP on Snow, and look at this, he's using the magic wand, and he's getting back, of course, 4 mana on his ultimate, but still, the EMP is still one of the best things against the Wraith King, like, till he is, like, really high level, like, this EMP will be really, really bad, especially if, I don't know, if he gets killed right after, before he can use the stick, he has no ultimate. Like, the best is really the combination of the Quas Wax and Walker with a Nyx for a second mana burn, so no Wraith King is gonna have ever his ultimate up. But now... Now we have that what I, what I already talked about, like March of the Machines twice or even sometimes three times is being spammed around the towers. The only thing they have to care about, of course, is that the Central Warrener doesn't open on the Tinker while he's trying to lay that patch. And <laughs> one minute toilet, wow, I've never seen a toilet break so far, like breaks for several reasons, but toilet was never one of them. So a toilet break is come. Who is winning um, these names, guys? Kanzil Pintar is asking who's winning. At the moment, it looks like Invasion is definitely in a better spot. But don't underestimate Skype, especially they have uh, heroes with Midas, with Devour. The Tinker is farming quite well. They have a lot of defense potential. So I wouldn't call it a game just yet. I think Skype has a very good chance to still make this. But of course, if we look at the crafts, um, Invasion now almost 7.5k in experience and when it comes to gold also working on the 7.5k a bit stagnant in the last uh, two minutes but let's see I mean there is a Moonlight Shadow now coming out and oh they want it they really want it here they they are looking for kills and I think they might find them but who dies first that's the question snow oh my god EMP and everything did not hit now the dust is coming out so invoker there would be theoretically the ghost walk if he can do all the tornado stolen but there's a lot of damage now Oh, the center got the doom. The Tinker now getting all the damage by Snow. There is no rearm. He will definitely go down. And now in the background, Ancient Apparition already got the kill on the Shadow Demon now. Wow, they just clean up. It's a miracle that this doom got out as well, of course, as the Marana. He just tried to do something with the arrow. This means tier 1 tower, free down by Scythe. They are losing control of the game. This was too greedy. I mean, they tried to get here, in this area, somewhere, a kill. But in the meantime, we had one coming here. Then the other ones come in here, so they were absolutely surrounded from three sides. And if they are not passed back, and if the Tinker especially doesn't spam his march of the machines, this translates into two towers at least down. Tech Labs Cup. Oh, no, I don't think so, because Tech Labs, these are CIS teams. Of course, many people are there, especially because uh, Toby Van is uh, streaming it. We were streaming, by the way. Um, it's not just that JD does everything, like Toby Van does only the LAN event. We actually stream the qualifiers, so some people might not know this, but Tech Labs, all the qualifiers were, were streamed by us on Hafla TV here, but for the big LAN events, of course, they went for either Beyond the Summit or Join Dota, and yeah, I think Join Dota got the official rights to stream it. How many people are there? Like, now you made me interested, okay? There are 20,000 people watching it, but only 13k on JD Red. That's not much for the fact that it is JD Red, to be honest. So... I don't know. 
for the fact that JD, I mean, if JD Red Toby One, for example, is streaming, then usually you have automatically like 10k viewers just for the for the bonus of of JD Red being famous. But now, oh my God, Doom, bad position. Is there any follow up? There is a stampede, and there. Viper Strike as well as the Ice Blast and it's just getting obliterated so Scythe again having to go back and Doom he didn't even pick up the Alpha Wolf there he's still sticking to the stun of the Santa Warner <laughs> Puppy Toilet <laughs> that's also a nice post there shout out to Mr. Van Rizzo Puppy Toilet that's the new Puppy Paws Oh, there's a tornado looking for something, actually for the Tinker, but they won't find it. And now March of the Machine, of course. That's really nice, the pipe timing is perfect. Now, of course, with the pipe, they try to absorb some of those of this damage. But yeah, Tinker is spamming. There's actually an arrow, and this is going to be a very long arrow on the Santa Warner, but look at him, he doesn't really care. 18.2 uh, HPS, that's a lot. Miracle, at the same time, he's trying to do some split pushing from range. At the moment, I don't know if Invasion wants to defend their tower or say hello to the High Crown, baiting out maybe even a rotation back. Miracle now hiding. Maybe he tries to go on snow. I don't think EMP is enough, especially with the magic wand. So going for him, I don't think that's an option. So the Rave King also getting really, really scared to be honest. Now Blink Dagger for the initiation. Molnius, of course, with the magical uh, chain lightning coming as a source of damage. The crit is already level 4. Um, the next item on him is very interesting, oh, but we had a go on the Tinker in the mid. He's dying so fast, too fast to cast. <laughs> I have no idea what Harlow means, but maybe some of you can translate it. I mean, the only downside is if they want to go high ground now, the Aegis is actually reclaimed in 30 seconds. And there's a Tornado EMP. This cost them a lot of time, as well as Deafening Blast and the Center actually getting here stunned directly. But there is not enough. Oh, the Rubik coming in. There's an Ice Blast, short range, hitting on two. And who's going in here? Oh, the Viper is going balls deep and high. Not getting the required damage then to kill here. But Doom, Doom, does he get his ultimate at least? Oh, he stuns both. This is a very awkward position. Oh, glad the illusion was there. But now, with the rocket spam and everything, he's disjointing it by just daggering out. So, Invasion, this first time going high ground didn't work out. Not much damage to the tower. They got a lot of damage, and now the Aegis of course down as well. I think they were just willing to dive that deep because of the Aegis on the Viper, but now it ran out. That means, yep, not so successful anymore. The problem is, uh, Tinker actually skipped completely Dagon and whatnot. He went directly for a Blink Dagger, which of course is kind of required to be safe on the lanes. Then again, Rave King for example has now a Blink Dagger. We have a Blink Dagger on uh, the Center Warner. And did the Rubik have one as well? Yeah, so catching the Tinker now is actually a quite easy thing to do. Now we have Ice Blast. Wow, not connecting on anything. But yeah, I mean Scythe, they still keep themselves in the game. Looking at the crafts though, it's spiraling out of their hands. So it's 14k almost in gold and experience. So this is something really, really hard to come back from. But Scythe is not given up yet. I mean, as long as the base is standing, it's called... I mean, it's called Defense of the Ancients for a reason. You only have to defend it and strike back and kill the other one. That's the entire goal of the game. We saw already a lot of throws, and we also saw a lot of games being thrown where you had, like, what, a 20k advantage. And I think our statsman, he said, like, last game, um, at when someone has, like, 15k advantage at 30 minutes, um, there is not a 100% win rate. If someone has 20k at 30 minutes, that's a 100% win rate. So right now, we are at the 28 minutes. It's not yet 15k, so there is, by stats at least, still a good chance that, yep, that Scythe can win this. But let's see. The first try here is on Snow. There is an EMP. It's not enough for his ultimate at the moment. And yeah, he will definitely go down. But there is the instant return. But BKB and TP out. So in the end, it was Snow for Miracle. I guess okay trade, just because... Um, the Rave King having his ultimate up and not being used because of the EMP, that's definitely nice. And of course, he he's yielding a lot more um, gold than anything else. I mean, this was... No, it wasn't even a killing spree, and unfortunately not. But if you compare the, the level, for example, that was a level 17 kill, and a level 13 and level 15 hero did it. So, on paper at least, it it's okay -ish trade. 
The big problem is also they have no vision whatsoever. Like there is here Observer Ward, it's scouting out exactly what they do here in front of their base, as well as like doing here those those pushes. It's I don't know. I I, I don't really like the fact that yeah, we didn't even see a gem attempt whatsoever. Well, actually, there is a gem on the Marana, but the Marana is just not in range. There is another Observer Ward just scouting out what's happening here. Ice Blast was hitting pretty much nothing, but now the initiate by the Rubik, but more and more just for harassing. And he gets Devour. Okay, that's that's interesting. So he can eat the next creep. Or he's going to even eat... Yeah, he's going to take that th Helper Smasher for Thunderclap. Look at it. No, he does not. He does not. Okay, that's interesting. He could have gotten like the thunderclap there, but he doesn't want to. That's interesting. Sometimes it's always good if you have a bit more nuke. But either way, we have of course now a big big task ahead for invasion. They have to push through a march of the machines. But they have blink dagger initiations, which means they can even skip to the side and just go for it. The Viper at the end I mean at the moment he doesn't really care. Oh, there's the EMP, there is the Tornado. Viper will lose a lot of mana, as well as the Rubik, of course. There is the, still the Rocket Spam. They used the Dagger just to disjoint it. The Arrow, again, just a bit off target. So in the end, the Tinker, yeah, they're pushing Invasion out. So they want the second Roshan, which is up now. So it's no cheese yet. But of course, the Aegis, I guess, on the Viper again. I mean, why not? Yep. Yeah. Viper, I mean, super tanky right now. Of course, Aghanim's the heart is, is done. He has a thousand gold up his sleeves at the moment. The ages on him is, I guess, the best choice and for the, the next round of potential high ground. Yep, that's that's exactly my point. Uh, yeah, Twitch 50k viewers. I mean, Dota, like to be honest, Dota compared to to LoL, for example, you don't attract many viewers with like gameplay. There's just when like the famous players, like Ateezy, for example, they stream. And usually in Dota, there's there's mostly the events. It's it's really the events that attract most of the viewers. And like, I mean, if if there's like join Dota, for example, beyond the summer JD Studios, maybe even Hafla TV with a couple thousand viewers on, then I mean, we have nice numbers. We have like 100, 150k on, on Twitch, maybe even more on, on some days. Oh my god, Snow, Tinker. Ah, oh, that was a nice bait. He interrupted his TP at the last second. He's eating an arrow, but I don't think they follow up because they, yeah, they smell their entire team. But, yep. But everybody who loves Dota, like, he doesn't, you, you don't care that, like, Dol has here and there, of course, some more viewers. I mean, really, who cares? Because Dota 2 is still growing fast, especially with the current TI. And I'm pretty sure around the TI we also have like a lot more views than all. So you shouldn't worry about it. You should just, you know, join the streams, enjoy the cast, and oh, Snow wants to go across of there. It's just a little harass. No, it's not just a little harass for the defensive disruption. So Ice Blast is for nothing, and Snow is getting so much damage. The Doom is getting out, but BKB used this EMP. It's gonna hit a lot of them. Like, they are pretty much um. There is a Doom on the center and snow dies the first time there is on oh, the arrow i don't know where this one got soaked up but invasion again no way they get on this high crown it's absolutely amazing with defensive disruption bkbs and everything i mean the center survives this ultimate but still no way they go high crown it's it's just amazing like scythe they're holding themselves in the game the only downside is invasion they're farming much better of course they have the game but look at this stagnant craft like f since what minute 25 26 the last time i showed the showed the crafts they barely have any progress in their direction hardly like they gain 1000 advantage everything stays the same and if they have a nice turnaround fight Scythe suddenly finding themselves like equalizing or at least down to like 10k 9k advantage only for invasion so this game is far from over unless they really manage to break one uh, one Rex here and at the moment well it looks like they want to there is a double damage on the Rave King but uh, short duration though like Miracle is farming now here the jungle so trying to optimize the farm a bit but they want to go high crown again they need him back he needs to come come on where's the TP 
they need you. They definitely need you. March of the Machine is, of course, taking care of a lot of things. Follow Sun now. Oh, there's a nice arrow on Snow. I mean, he still has his ultimate, so it's all good. The EMP is coming out as well, and deafening class. So he goes down the first time. Ultimate back, he just keeps hitting the tower. March of the Machine still ticking. Invasion just can't break it at the moment. It's amazing. They just can't break this egg round. I mean, the tower is losing. Like, I think Sky would wish they had a train protector now instead of. I don't know, for example, that Mirana. I'm so useful was the Mirana. Uh, the Mirana wasn't that useful in the game, to be honest, but now that I think about it, I mean, there was two or three nice arrows, but the rest, I guess the Moonlight Shadow was, was still nice, but now that the gem is up on both teams, also not too good of a pickup anymore. But yeah, it's, it's funny, like, for... 15 minutes or more, they still try to go for high crown. But now, oh my god, Tinker, you have to care though. Snow is here, but he's already TPing out. Like, March of the Machine, like, on both here. Snow getting even quite some damage on that. And, oh, Ancient Apparition just picked up an invisibility rune. Not that it matters, but it's all good. I mean, Tinker now farming the lanes, pushing out the lanes. We have the Doom now. Yeah, he's, he's getting a bit more ballsy now. Does he? Oh, okay. I thought maybe he's swapping the aura, so he's still sticking to swiftness aura, and to be honest, I think it's time to eat Alpha Wolf here. This Alpha Wolf, the aura is of course coming out just for him, he's getting the critical chance, but this is interesting, like 30% bonus damage, I think they need it by now on the team. I mean, Invoker goes into uh, some right click here with a Maelstrom, the Mirana would maybe be soon interested in to some point, and okay, there was uh, just a little EMP, Tornado, whatever, coming out, Snow getting... No, he wasn't even caught in that EMP. So in the end, back to high ground. An invasion is going for another try. But March of the Machines will just wait for them. There's number one, number two, and now with the Shivas and everything. Like, he has really, like, an awesome push potential. Oh, the stolen arrow is flying by Doom. Now Doom having a huge problem here. And he's gonna, Snow is gonna go down the first time. Just in the March of the Machines. But Doom, does he have a buyback? That's the question. Yes, there is a buyback on Doom. The tier 3 tower is going down. There is a new... Oh my god, this time Snow. There is no ultimate up on him. As well as, of course, the mana burn. There is a lot of burst damage, of course, coming here by the Tinker. But finally, they achieved to get the tower down. This arrow won't hit anything. There is more spam of the Viper Strike. Poloson has to be really, really careful. Like, I mean, he still has the BKB as well as the Trumps. But Invasion just coming in, killing the tower, going back. I don't know how often they want to repeat it. I guess if they go like this, then sure, why not, then get in next time a Rex, slow siege, bit by bit, I guess it could work out, but I'm still waiting for all out in for Sky. the problem is, Sky has no carry whatsoever, nobody who could right click against those heroes, I mean Doom, no right click items whatsoever, just a BKB giving him some damage here, Mirana, far away from any right click whatsoever, him getting like a Maelstrom, getting some level, would be the next step, but I mean, he's level 9 compared, look at this, like the AA and the Rubik on the other side, they're level 13, so, those supports, they really need levels, that's the biggest problem at the moment for Scythe, I mean, Mirana would be one of those candidates in a really, really late game who can rotate into some more damage, but I just don't see this happening, also the Shadow Demon not having any items whatsoever, uh, it's, it's actually a miracle that he has a 4 stuff, which will save him or allies of course now miracle he's looking at top and actually he might actually uh, he might get a kill on the rubik if he gets him with emp and a deafening blast afterwards plus right clicks with the mjolnir's on him it could work out but i guess with the ancient apparition around him by the way ancient apparition i forgot to mention like 30 seconds ago he got uh, a ganem scepter and well a ganem scepter something you don't really want to get hit by if you have the ice blast so let's see how long this game goes I mean Scythe I think yep they're gonna face another push in here in the mid invasion is already grouping up everybody's coming except for the Viper Viper has no BOTs so he's going like the original way and he's taking that creep wave with him I guess why not so oh but in the mid we already have a ghost no already hitting through that shadow demon nice initiation the ice pass is absolutely off target but of course they can go for high ground now the viper is coming from the side actually and they get the kill on 
the Tinker. Now all the buybacks are coming. Miracle doing some damage as well. Now the Viper being stunned in a very awkward place. There's a double Star Storm, but still surviving. Hoops up on two. But I think Santa, this time you're going down. Yes, Santa is going down. That is also a jump on him. Like there's a nice arrow, but the arrow is not connected. Now they're all blinking away, but Miracle is on the hunt. He's with the Ghost Walk up here. Now the Viper being slowed. Like pretty much all of them slowed, but Snow, Snow I think found Tinker. Tinker, awkward position. Yeah, and he's instantly blinking out. Like that, the center went down with the gem. That is, of course, very, very awkward. Theoretically, uh, <laughs> Miracle could just scout it out. So in the end, they don't lose a Rex. Still, they just lose uh, a high value kill here on the center Warner. But, oh, Ice Blast. Not hitting on the Marana. The funny thing is, if that Ice Blast hits on the Marana, and if that would be level 3, I think she would die. Like, I really think she would die. Level 3, impact damage, the burn damage as well. Like, this would be enough. Especially if he's not full HP. If he's hit at 600, burn damage will bring him down... Yep. Yeah, the impact damage down to, what, 500, 400, 300. The burn damage would bring him way below the threshold for a Shatter. So, Marana needs... Items and the hell is he picking up? Quelling Blade. I think he had that one before. Like new wards, the gem. He's not a gem carrier. And he's not even level 11. Also, the Shadow Demon. Oh my god, this is very. Oh, the Tinker. Do they want to go for the Viper? I don't think so. That's not a good idea. Even with the Doom. Doom would have been 7 seconds on cooldown. And I don't think they killed the Viper with not even with a Doom. Plus, of course, T1 Tower is still standing, even though it's on low HP. That's the biggest problem for for safe. They don't, they lack the gold of the towers. I mean, the towers being low is one thing, but getting them down is the other thing. Tinker's doing now a nice job, of course, um, like defending the base on the one hand, pushing out the lanes on the other hand. We have Miracle pretty much doing the same job here, top. So. They cost a lot of time for uh, invasion at the moment to get back to high ground. Like, if there was split push possible for invasion, I think they should do it, like, pushing at least two waves out, but, oh, Tinker, he's disjointing that, oh my god, there's a deafening blast on Tinker, and it actually worked. Now, there's a new plane, oh, they find him, but Merkel's helping out, and now, what he needs is a four staff, he's getting out, but he's getting hit by the center, there's a deafening blast buying some time, oh, he's going down and that is really really big because you look at it, he has no buyback, he just used it in the base defense and now 80 seconds without a tinker, if invasion has any anything to do, then they should do it now, oh, but the doom BKB out, but look at the damage from uh, the Wraith King, if the Wraith King had like another good decent de like item, they could actually go for a kill, but the funny thing is Invasion, they don't go high crown, they decide to go Roshan. I think they should have used that window of opportunity to go high crown, because without a Tinker March of the Machines, I don't think there's a lot Scythe can do. So, Roshan is down, this is the third Roshan, that means we have a cheese. And the cheese is on Viper. Yep, but Viper being so tanky. Jesus Christ, Heart of the Rust, Butterfly, the again in Scepter, and the cheese on top of it. So, please, you got 30 seconds time till the Tinker is spamming his March of the Machines. So, the only thing that holds you back is now, of course, such an Ice Wall. As well as, of course, some spam of the Tornado. But this time the Tornado is not even coupled up. Actually, it is now with the EMP. So, there's three people getting hit by the EMP, but they don't really care. So... Oh, there's the initiation on Polosan and Polosan. He's getting chewed through at the moment. There is some nice steals coming out. There is actually EMP by the Rubik, but the Viper. Viper is going for. Yeah, he was going for Kai. Uh, maybe he's going down by the poison damage. There's another EMP, and this time it is the EMP by the Rubik. The ultimate here, the Doom on the Viper, won't do anything. I mean, the good thing is. Oh, he actually gets hit by an arrow, but he couldn't care less. In the end, the racks are down. Tinker is back, but yeah, the damage is done and Scythe. We have to look. 15k. I mean, this is the most stagnant graph I've ever seen. With the Tinker, they hold their high crown so well, but now in the mid, of course, they have empowered creeps. Let's see if this works out. And I actually hope we don't see another half an hour game, because then I'm getting in trouble with my schedule, because here, the Battle of Central Europe is starting here on Hefla TV 1 at 18 ZET. So if they go for, like, some 100-minute game here because of super tight defense, then I'm getting in trouble. Like, I wasn't expecting it going to long. But, oh, they go again on the Tinker. But is there any follow-up yet? Yeah, there is the follow-up. Easy going. So much damage. The Ice Pass would have been there as well. So, Tinker, you're going down. 
the third time in a row. No buyback on him, still a minute cooldown and even if he didn't have the gold. So 60 minutes on the sideline. I think Invasion should go again. They might, might find here Miracle. There is there's the Viper Strike. Look at the damage the Viper does. It's just amazing. And oh, the Hoof Stump is not hitting, but they don't even need it. Viper is just killing him. And now Kai, the vision is up on him. What they need is one more hit, by the way. And there's a double force stuff. Just bringing Kai here absolutely in safety. Wow. <laughs> double force stuff on the TP. I love it. There's an arrow flying, not connecting on the Viper, and yes, Invasion does what they should do. They go for more high ground, they want to see it. In the mid, the creeps are already pushing out, as well as, of course, the center giving some help there. But Miracle, well, he's there just to help out, and the Viper can now go for high ground. He doesn't have to care, because the funny thing is he has a heart, and as long as nobody is hitting him, like, the heart is active, and you actually count... Sorry, you count to heal what the tower does to you. Now the creeps are of course coming in the mid. They're also pushing in. They are empowered. The Tinker is not there for another two seconds. But now Tinker is back. And the question is, do they get maybe the racks before? I mean, there's a lot of creeps. There's all the Viper Strike spamming in there. And Polosaur now going for the Doom. There is a Tornado as well as the EMP. But it doesn't really hit anyone. Everybody has like the BKB. Ancient Apparition gets the kill on the Tinker again. And he calls GG. Because without a Tinker, there's no way that can somehow just defend this lane. I mean, Skyf did an uh, amazing job when it came to uh, when it came to defending the high ground, just like Invasion did in game number one. The problem is they were so behind in everything, XP and gold, till the end. Like, defending your base is one thing. Going out of the base and farming or counter farming against Invasion, that was the other thing. Every time they left their base, may it be Miracle, may it be uh, the Doom or the Tinker, like, they had no way like sooner or later they got all the pickoffs because like what the fuck how many daggers were there uh, against them as well as bkbs and and all this mobility coming out so there was not really any chance like free daggers just searching for you even if you're a tinker and in the trees and also the supports i mean the supports that the the support sd here had a 4k net worth at 45 minutes into the game it's I don't know, not really working out. Either way, guys, this was a best of two series, or rather a two-game series, and it's 1-1. That's the final standing. My name is Haflamog, and we will be online with the next game here at 18 CET. It's called the Battle of Central Europe, and it's the semi-final in the... Yeah, semi-final in the loser bracket. Now I just have to find uh, the doc to actually announce the teams. So, yeah, it is going to be... Uh, my Insanity versus TCN, a Romanian team versus a uh, Serbian team, and Aggressive Minds, they wait for the winner of this team already in the loser bracket final, and the grand finals will be tomorrow, and there we will decide who's getting that prize pool, pretty much. So, that's it for me, till pretty much in 25 minutes I continue to cast. So, thank you for tuning in. Uh, if you like what you do, of course, then follow us on our English channels, Hefla TV 1 and 2, as well as on my private channel, if you want to... Uh, see of course me play or of course sometimes we use that channel as well if we have too many tournaments at the same time and yeah on facebook and twitter you always will be informed about the next games and that being said guys thanks for tuning in in 25 minutes the next games are coming up everything will be ticket as well of course on gozo gamers and several betting sites whatsoever so you will find me there you can bet of course on those games on those uh on our games as well like, for example, Dura 2, Best Yolo, picks up a lot of JDL games if you don't know that betting site yet. Either way, some music, some, some ads, and then I will be back.